So Danny Jacobs and Sergei Derevyanchenko are supposed to be fighting on either October the 20th or October the 27th. Lou DiBella and Eddie Hearn have sorted out a deal, put the differences aside, even though they've both kind of agreed to give each other a little bit of jip during the press conference. And they've made probably the best, arguably the best middleweight fight that could be made in the division outside of Golovkin and the Canelo rematch. It's a very good fight between two guys who are in their prime, very different statures, very different styles. And whoever wins is going to pick up the vacant IBF title that Golovkin was stripped of when he chose to fight that uh, Vans Martyroshan, that uh, very forgettable two-round demolition. So whoever wins is going to get another piece of the puzzle and very much stamp themselves in the division as the number three man after, I think, whoever wins out of Golovkin and Canelo. Now, Derevyanchenko is very well-schooled, very good amateur. He is the better boxer here in terms of polish. Jacobs has got him for size and reach. Jacobs is scraping six foot. He's got quite a bit long arms. And when he gets into the ring, he always rehydrates like a mother trucker. I think was he about 180 pounds against Golovkin. One of the reasons that probably Golovkin found him so difficult to deal with. And while I got over the initial hysteria of how well Jacobs did, and I kind of agreed that Golovkin kind of won the fight with the jab and control there, Jacobs definitely showed in that fight that he was probably better than most people thought. Whether Golovkin was on the slide a little bit or is on the slide regardless, Jacob showed us that he is better than people previously thought. He's a very well-rounded boxer. He can do a lot. He can box. He can move. He's a little bit, and in his recent fights, he's looked a bit scrappy and forced, but he can punch. He's got a lot of heart, and he can box well to instruction when he listens to Andre Rosia, who used to be, of course, Derevyanchenko's cornerman as well. He's going to be with Jacobs in this fight. And these two guys have sparred a lot as well before. So there's quite a bit of history going on there. Hopefully it won't be one of those cases in which two guys who have sparred a lot, they know each other too well. And it leads to something of a, a dance that uh, nothing really happens and they cancel each other out. Hopefully there's going to be a lot of spite in this one. They both recognize that there's a belt on the line and it's going to prove a really good fight. Now, in terms of who I think is going to win, as I say, Derevyanchenko has got Jacobs in terms of poise and skill. He's got better footwork. He's got a better defense. He's more poised when he looks for a shot. And in Jacobs' last fight against the pole, whose name I can't quite uh, get at the moment, he was a bit open to the straight right hand, I noticed at times. The guard went down and he took it. And again, Jacobs sometimes has that over-eager, slightly scrappy quality about him that a more polished operator like Derevyanchenko could take advantage of. But thinking about it as things stand, there's nothing really in it in terms of mileage, even though Jacobs has had a longer career and, of course, got over cancer. I think he's basically still banging his prime. Derevyanchenko, very well, a very young 32, only having had 12, is it 12 professional fights so far? But I still, I think I just give Jacobs the edge in this with how much he's going to rehydrate he, can, he very well may look to box a bit more in this one and use his superior 73-inch reach. And then I think the difference is going to be when he leans all that weight on the Ukrainian, that probably about 180 pounds will come and he'll find it difficult. And he's got a lot of heart, Jacobs, in that even when he is scrappy, he can throw those extended combinations and really gut it out. And he seems very tough as well. So I think in a high volume, very good fight where Derevyanchenko definitely finds his marks, finds holes in that defense. I think ultimately the size and gutsiness of Jacobs at this point will win him a very entertaining decision. What do you think of this fight? It's definitely a good thing to be happening. As I say, it takes some of the um, limelight off the Golovkin-Canelo fight. You know, there's other things to be said about the middleweight division. Who do you think is going to win this very interesting middleweight scrap?